tomorrow. And at the time, I was a, I was a designated hitter against right-handed pitching. I was hitting uh, almost exclusively left-handed by that point. And, um, and uh, they were pitching a left-hander the next day, Joe McGrain, so I knew I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be starting. And uh, so I said, well, I, so my dad asked me, what, what, are you, what are you thinking? I said, well, I know exactly when I'll be in the game. And uh, he said, really? I said, yeah. He said, well, w- when would it be? I said, it'll be in the seventh inning or later with the game on the line against Todd Worrell. And he said, what, what makes you say that? And I said, because there's two guys in our lineup that TK will pinch hit for. Uh, it'll either be Steve Lombardozzi or Greg Gagne. And nobody, nobody, he's not going to pinch hit for anybody else. And he's only going to pinch hit for those guys for def- because of def- the defense, uh, he wants to leave them in the game. He's only going to pinch hit for those guys, uh, either one of those guys, if the game's on the line late in the game where he, he really he feels like, you know, we got we to take a chance to get the runs in here. And it'll only be one of them because we had Al Newman on the bench, and that was it, it, that was going to be the the move. He, he would pinch it for one. Newman could play either position, just depending on the situation of the game. So, I, and I said, if the game's on the line, Whitey Herzog, the St. Louis manager, is going to have Todd Worrell in the game. So I'm pretty convinced that if 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 I hit, it's going to be against Worrell with the game on the line, late you know late in the game. My dad, you know, fit you know, finish his beer and kind of. Gave me a little toast and said, "Well, sleep well." <laughs> <laughs> and so, the next day we're playing the game, and it's um, and it's two to two, and and you know I, I'm kind of I'm looking at the lineup card, you know, it, it, along about the fourth inning, and I'm I'm kind of seeing how things are going, and by the you know fifth or sixth inning, I've, I'm running up and down the stairs, and I, I, it just felt to me like the the way this thing was going to play out. I it, you know there was going to be a, a a possibility coming up, and I went up in the clubhouse. And I was swinging a bat, and you know, and I was, I was loose. Now we um, we uh, get uh, two guys on with um, one out, and um, I'm in. The, I, I'm back in the in the tunnel. I've got my batting gloves on, my helmet on, and and you know, I'm I'm ready to go. I, I look down there at the bullpen, and Todd Worrell's warming up. <laughs> And uh, Whitey goes out and brings Worrell in the game, and TK comes around the corner and looks back at the tunnel, and Gene Larkin's back there, and Randy Bush and I, are, you know, the three of us are back there. We're, we're, you know, we're ready. And he pointed at me and he said, you know, go get him. And uh, that was an intensive bat. They now I, went, I came out of the on-deck circle. They announced, you know, my name, hitting for Lombardozzi, and and um, um, it was. I, I've never experienced the volume, it, and it was it was so loud. I I got in the in the box. It actually helped because it was so loud. My ear, uh, what do you, what do you call it, a timpani or whatever, that, whatever. What are the what are those things in in your ear that the, in in your ear? They, they were vibrating so much. All I heard was like it was a hum. It was like a, mm, huh. and it was it was almost like the chanting of a mantra or something. I mean, it wow. it actually. It, it actually was kind of relaxing because I just I, I, it was it was focus on the ball and this this humming in my in my ears, and uh, it was just a classic at bat. It was a great it, I mean it was a great battle. I mean he's throwing you know ninety eight or whatever he throws and it, and I you know taking a pitch and fouling one off and taking a pitch and fouling one off and taking a, you know it, it, and it foul you know it it was a seven or eight pitch at bat. Finally walked to load the bases and Gagne came up. Uh, uh, next, and he he sawed Gags off. He broke his bat, but the ball dribbled up the third baseline, and Gagne, with, you know, the one run scored. Gagne beat it out, and and we ultimately, I think, Danny Gladden hit a sacrifice fly at some point in time then or late or another inning, something something about it. Just, but I, but that was it. That was four to two, and we we won the ball game. So um, it was great fun to be a part of that. You know that. You know, that winning rally really was. I've, I've talked to a million people about 87. And I've heard a million stories. I never heard it put like that, that it was so loud that you basically all you heard was a hum. That's, That's all I heard was a hum. It was just, it, it, wow. it, it, I mean, because it never ebbed. Mm-hmm. You know, it never subsided. The noise never subsided. It was, it was just a hum. Wow. Because it was so loud. That's great stuff. Uh, we got have a lot of good Twitter questions we want to get to. Do want to thank our producer, Brandon Morton. 
Uh, and also ask if you listen to the show and you can, please download. That provides you the best listening experience. It's good for us too. Uh, and I want to thank whizkids.tech. Uh, it's W H I Z K I D S dot tech. They're sponsoring a few shows across the network right now. And uh, you might notice a theme here. They are a Minneapolis company, they are local. They, uh, they love Roy, they love our co hosts, they love what we're doing here. We like working with Minneapolis and Minnesota companies, uh, people who you know get get what we're doing and know that we get what they do. Uh, Wizkids.tech. You know, whether you understand the kind of stuff they provide or not, I was going to say you don't you get what it. they do. I, don't, I know you don't get uh, all the cool stuff that they. You no, know they do. They do managed IT services, unified communications, cloud services. I just don't know exactly what all that stuff is. Do you? <laughs> well, of course I don't. Okay, yeah. Come on. So that's my point, is you don't have to understand it to need well, it. Well, it, there's, a, there's a reason why I am not in a business where I have to make decisions about that kind of uh, technology. It's, it's, there's, there's people uh, like this that, uh, that do that stuff for us, so... And that's the that's thing, good. is when you need that kind of help, you want somebody you can trust. Right. And that's where, you know, working with a local company where you're walking distance from them, you can, you can have a developer relationship with Michael Thanner and his people. It uh, takes a lot of the stress out of all that stuff. So check out WizKids.tech. Hello, Minnesota sports fans. This is Michael Thanner, founder and CEO of WizKids. WizKids is a Minneapolis-based managed IT, hosted VoIP, and cloud services provider. Businesses today require fast response times, skilled support staff, clear communication, and technology recommendations that align with their business goals. At WizKids, we do this each and every day with our clients. When you call into our help desk for support or work with one of our higher-level engineers on a complex issue, you'll find our staff personable and ready to roll up their sleeves to help you solve your technology problems. Reach out to WizKids today to find out how we can help your business meet your technology goals. Visit us online at wizkids.tech. That's whizkids.tech. Whizkids, make it happen. All right, good Twitter questions. Uh, let me start off with Mr. Generous Carriage. He's still calling himself that, and I love it. Uh, it's just beautiful. He, he said, uh, should Buxton come back up to the Twins? By the way, Buxton, I think, uh, coming off the DL, hit another home run uh, in AAA. Should Buxton come back up to the Twins, and what should the plan be for him? And is he hearing too many voices? And if so, who should be the voices working on his swing right now? Well, you mean, is he hearing too many voices like... I think he's talking about too many like, coaches. Too like you help. do when you're, you know, when you're alone at night and... Uh, and uh, no, let's stay uh, away from uh, my psychological uh, problems uh, and just talk about <laughs> Byron's uh, hitting problems. Uh, yes, they should... Uh, they, they sh- he should come back. He should be back here in September if healthy. And um, they, should, they should baby him until September. Make, you play him every other day for a while and, and, you know, make sure that risk gets okay. And then he should come up, play center field every day. Uh, in September, in in my view, and then the, and I think I mentioned on on, our, on this show uh, a couple of weeks ago that uh, a radical idea that I have that I think that they should do, you know, the Twins should do with both Sano and Buxton, is uh, send them both to uh, winter ball. Now it, uh, Miguel Sano is under contract to play uh, in uh, San Pedro de Macorís, where he's from. Mm-hmm. Um, send Byron down there too, yeah. and uh, take the hitting coaches that they. You know, I mean. Spend the money, whatever it takes. These guys haven't played enough baseball in the last two years, especially this year. And I did, I'll just say again, maybe it was last week, and, and I'm sorry for repeating, but because of the question, they can't just let these guys go and do what they want to do on their own, in, the, in my view, in the wintertime, have them show up for spring training. They're such a foundational element to, to this team that if those guys aren't great players... It's a five-year reset, and they can't they, whatever money it takes to have them go play ball in good competition, play games, take their hitting coaches, have them work every day, uh, and um, monitor how how they're doing. So when they show up in spring training, they're ready to go, and they and they've and they can hit the opening day in April, feeling like. You know they're going to lead this. You know, lead this uh, resurgence that they that the twins need to need to have. Um, I I just don't think those kinds of things happen very much these days. But um, I I think I actually even think that the uh, twins might be considering something like that. I um, uh, interestingly enough, I thought that, that was my idea was such a radical one they would never consider it. But I'm kind of getting some. Um, 
inkling and sus- suspicion they might they might be even considering doing that. So I I think that I think it would be great for them. Great idea. I have another thought on that. Do want to thank Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent in Champlin. Tony handles uh, my insurance, Michael Russo's insurance. Who Michael obviously does the hockey show with us. H O A G L U N D. Again, he works out of Champlin, but you can use his app. You can call him. You can go to their website. There are a lot of ways you can work with them, even if you don't happen to live just right by him. Hey, Minnesota sports fans, this is your local State Farm agent, Tony Hoagland. I need you all to ask yourselves this question. If you're in an at-fault car accident and you are sued for $700,000, how much of that $700,000 will my current insurance company pay? If you are unsure or can't answer all $700,000, you need to give us a call. State Farm has been number one in car insurance since World War II and number one in homeowners insurance since 1964. For a no-obligation review of your current policies, call us at 763 763- 421-4900 or check out our website at www.champlininsurance.com. So I think that's a great idea. And my question would be, who do you send there to work with them? Because you don't want them just kind of freelancing. No, you can't have them freelancing. It does, that doesn't, I mean, it, and I think they, it ought to be a mutual uh, uh, decision between the club and each of those players. You know, and, and who who does a club think will be the best hitting coach for a four, five, six week stretch of time? That they, I mean, they don't have to play for two months, but they need to play some games. And and who's gonna? Who does a club think will be the the best uh, hitting coach option for each of those players? And who do the players uh, think it would be? And come to some kind of agreement, and then spend whatever it takes, and it, you know, to make it worthwhile for the coaches to go down there. And um, and so that they're they're taking extra batting practice every day, and then they go play in the game. And and you know it's a the Dominican when I played back there, you know, decades ago, it was really a great it was a great league because there are four teams in the league, and you play a bunch of home games, then you go at, at the 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 drives at most two hours away to the other three towns from wherever it, it, you're playing, and so you pl- we typically would. Um, play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, have Thursday off and play Friday and Saturday and have Sunday off, you know, and, and so there's two days off a week and, and it's, you're not absolutely killing yourself, but they just need to, they need to play they, some games. They, they, I, I just don't want to see Byron, for example, go back to his home and hit, his, hit in the cage, nope. you know, and, Hasn't and, worked. and I just, you know, I'd like to see him play some games, uh, play four, five, six weeks of games, and and every day have a be working with the hitting instructor that they've decided is the, the best one for him to. Uh, and and I, frankly, I feel the same way about Sonel. Yeah, well, I spent time with Buxton, uh, you know, when he was kind of about to break on the major league scene, and you know, he was with other major. He, he was with his agent in Atlanta with other major league pitchers, and minor league pitchers, throwing batting practice, but you know, it wasn't a very energized. Uh, atmosphere. It's just cage work, you know? And then last, I know last winter he spent in Baxley, Georgia, which is a very small town and he hung out with his high school, you know, and so he had guys around Baxley he was working out with. It, it needs to be stepped up a bit. There's no immediate feedback with how you're doing in right. the batting cage if you're not playing games as well. And you can hit all winter long and, and think things are fine, but it's it's just not even close. And the, the beauty of a baseball season, for example, is you're working with a hitting coach and you're working on some things and then you take it out there on, in the game when all of a sudden the ball's coming at you know 95 miles an hour or more and the ball's moving a lot and it's changing speeds and all that. And you say, okay, how's this working? And you do that for a week or two and you, and you come back you, and you say, okay, let's make this adjustment or that one. And, and where's your mind? You know, what's your plan at the plate? I mean, you, in the cage... You know what your plan is. He's just going to throw the ball down the middle, and you're going to try to hit, you know try to hit it hard. And and there's a lot more to it than that. Obviously, when you get in against uh, big league pitching, and there's the physical you know nature of the, your hitting mechanics, but there's also what's your what's your plan against this particular guy, and and are you thinking correctly about that, and how does that work into the mechanics that you're trying to you know employ here to become a you know more consistent hitter? There's a, there's a myriad of things, and. And you can approximate that a bit in in winter ball. Um, if, it, but I do think that having the coach that you that you decided on there is an important part. It's a, it, of constant feedback. Of work work at this, play the game. Work at this, play the game. How's it working? Work at this, play the game. Try the you know, 
add this to the, you know, to, to the process. I just think that whole process uh, would be very, very beneficial for those two guys. And they are so important to the